that e'er I had. I spent it in good company, and of all the harm that e'er I've done, alas, was done to none but me. And all I've done for want of wit to memory now I can't recall. So fill to me the parting glass. Good night and joy be Chair I had they're sorry for my gone away and of all the sweethearts that e'er I had they wish me one more day to stay but since it Raftery's Praise of Mary Hines Going to Mass by the will of God The day came wet and the wind rose I met Mary Hines at the cross of Kiltartan And I fell in love with her there and then I spoke to her, kind and mannerly As by report was her own way And she said, Raftery, my mind is easy You may come today to Ballylee when I heard her offer, I did not linger. When her talk went to my heart, my heart rose. We had only to go across the tree fields. We had daylight with us to Ballylee. The table was laid with glasses and a quart measure. She had fair hair and she sitting beside me. And she said, Drink, Raftery, and a hundred welcomes. There is a strong cellar in Ballylee. O oh, star of light, and O oh, sun in the harvest, O oh, amber hair, O oh, my share of the world, will ye come with me on the Sunday, till we agree together before all the people? I would not begrudge you a song every Sunday evening, punch on the table or wine if you would drink it, but O oh, king of glory, Dry the roads before me till I find the way to Ballylee. There is sweet air on the side of the hill when you are looking down upon Ballylee. When you are walking in the valley picking nuts and blackberries, there is music of the birds in it and music of the she. 
What is the worth of greatness till you have the light of the flower of the branch that is by your side? There is no good to deny it or to try and hide it. She is the sun in the heavens who wounded my heart. There is no part in Ireland I did not travel. From the rivers to the tops of the mountains, to the edge of Lough Green whose mouth is hidden, and I saw no beauty but was behind hers. Her hair was shining, and her brows were shining too. Her face was like herself, her mouth pleasant and sweet. She is the pride, and I give her the branch. She is the shining flower of Ballylee. It is Mary Hines, the calm and easy woman, has beauty in her mind and in her face. If a hundred clerks were gathered together, they could not write down a half of her ways. Kathleen Nehulahan. What is that sound I hear? I don't hear anything. I hear it now. It's like cheering. I wonder what they're cheering about. I, I don't see anybody. Oh, it might be a hurling. There's no hurling today. It's supposed to be down in the town the cheering is. I suppose the boys must be having some spark of their own. Come over here, Peter, and look at Michael's wedding clothes. Oh, those are grand clothes indeed. You hadn't clothes like that when you married me. And no coats but on of a Sunday more than any other day. That is true indeed. We never thought a son of ours would be wearing a suit of that sort for his wedding, or if any so good a place to bring his wife to. There's an old woman coming down the road. I, I don't know. Is, is it here she's coming? It'll be a neighbour coming to hear about Michael's wedding. Can you see who it is? I think it is a stranger. But she's she's not coming to the house. Uh, she turned into the gap that goes down where Mertin and his sons were shearing sheep. Do you remember what Winnie of the Crossroads said the other day about a strange woman that goes through the town whatever time there's war or trouble coming? Don't be bothering us about Winnie's talk, but go open the door for your brother. I hear him coming up the path. Oh, I hope he has brought Delia's fortune them safe, for fear her people might go back on the bargain and I after making it. Trouble enough I had making it. What kept you, Michael? We were looking out for you this long time. I went round by the priest's house to bid him be ready to marry us tomorrow. Did he say anything? Oh, he said it was a very nice match, and that he was never better pleased to marry any two in his parish than myself and Delia Cobb. Have you got the fortune, Michael? <laughs> Here it is. Oh, yes, I made the bargain well for you, Michael. Oh, John Cahill was sooner kept his share away longer. Let me keep off it until the first boy is born, says he. You will not, says I, because whether there is or is not a boy, the whole hundred pounds must be in Michael's hands before he brings your daughter to the house. The wife spoke to him then, and he gave in in the end. You seem well pleased to be handling the money, Peter. Indeed. I wish I had the luck to get a hundred pounds, or twenty pounds itself for the wife that I married. Oh, well, if I didn't bring much, I didn't get much. What had you the day I married you but a flock of hens and you feeding them and a few lambs and you driving them to the market at Belina? If I brought no fortune, I worked it out in me bones, laying down the baby, Michael that's standing there now, on a stuck of straw while I dug potatoes and never to be asking big dresses or anything but to be working. Oh, that is true indeed. Leave me alone now till I ready the house for the woman that is to come into it. You're the best woman in Ireland, <laughs> but money is good too. <laughs> I never thought to see so much money within my four walls. We could do great things now that we have it. We could take the ten acres of land we have a chance of since Jamesy Dempsey died and stock it. We could go to the fair in Belina and buy the stock. Did Dealey ask any of the money for her own use, Michael? Well, she did not indeed. She did not seem to take much notice of it or to look at it at all. Well, that's no wonder. Why would she look at it when she had yourself to look at? A fine, strong young man. It is proud she must be to get you, a good, steady boy who will make good use of the money and not go running it through or spending it on drink like another. Oh, it's likely Michael himself wasn't thinking much of the fortune either. But of what sort the girl was to look at. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would like a nice, comely girl to be beside you and to go walking with you. The fortune only lasts for a while, but the woman will be there always. Um, they're cheering again down in the town. Maybe they're landing horses from Inniscrone, they... They do be cheering when the horses take the water well. Oh, there are no horses in it. 
Where would they be going in no fair at hand? Go down to the town, Patrick, and see what is going on. Will Delia remember, do you think, to bring the greyhound pup that she promised me when she would be coming to the house? She will, surely. It will be Patrick's turn next looking for a fortune, but he won't find it so easy to get in here with no place of his own. I do be thinking sometimes, now that things are going so well with us and the Cahale's such a good back to us in the district, oh, and Delia's own uncle, a priest, we might be looking in the way to make Patrick a priest someday. And he's so good at his books. Time enough, time enough. You always have your head full of plans, Bridget. We will be well able to give him learning and not go sending him tramp in the hills like some poor scholar that lives on charity. They're not done cheering yet. Do you see anything? Oh, I see an old woman coming up to path. It must be that strange woman Patrick saw a while ago. Can you see who it is? I don't think it's one of the neighbours anyway. But she has her cloak over her face. It must be some neighbour heard we were making ready for the wedding and came to look for her share. I may as well put the money out of sight. There's no use leaving it out for every stranger to look at. There she is, father. Oh, I'd sooner a stranger not to come to the house the night before my wedding. Open the door, Michael. Don't keep the poor woman waiting. God save all here. God save you kindly. You have good shelter here. Oh, you're welcome to whatever shelter we have. Sit down there by the fire and welcome. There is a hard wind outside. Have you travelled far today? I have travelled far, far, very far. There are few who have travelled so far as myself. And there's many a one that doesn't make me welcome. There was a one who had strong sons, and I thought they were friends of mine. But they were shearing their sheep, and they wouldn't listen to me. Well, it's a pity indeed for any person to not have a place of their own. Well, that's true for you indeed. And it's long that I'm on the road since I first went a wandering. It's a wonder you're not worn out with so much wandering. Sometimes my feet are tired and my hands are quiet. But there is no quiet in my heart. When the people see me quiet, they think, Old age has come on me and that all the star has gone out of me. But when the trouble is on me, I must be talking to my friends. What was it put you wandering? Too many strangers in the house. Indeed, it looks as if you've had your share of trouble. (sighs) I've had trouble indeed. What was it put the trouble on you? My land was taken from me. It wasn't much land they took from you. My four beautiful green fields. Do you think she could be the widow Casey that was put over holding a kill glass a while ago? No, she's not. I saw the widow Casey one time at the market in Belinna. A stout... Fresh woman. Ah, did you hear the noise of cheering? And you coming up the hill? I thought I heard the noise I used to hear when my friends came to visit me. I will go cry with the woman For the yellow-haired Donna is dead With a hempen rope for a neckcloth and a white cloth on his head. What is that you are singing, ma'am? Singing I am about a man I knew one time. A yellow-haired Donna that was hanged in Galway. I am come to cry with you, woman. My hair is unwound and unbound. I remember him plowing his field. Turning red side of the ground And building his barn on a hill With that good martyred stone Oh, we'd had pulled down the gallows Had it happened in an escrone What was it that brought him his death? <laughs> He died for the love of me. Many a man has died for the love of me. Her trouble has put her wits astray. Is it long since that song was made? Is it long since he got his death? Well, not long, not long. But there were there were others that died for the love of me a long time ago. Were they neighbours of your own, ma'am? 
Well, come here beside me and I'll tell you about them. There was a red man of the O'Donnells from the north. Oh, and a man of the O'Sullivans from the south. Oh, and there was a one Brian that lost his life at Clanturf by the sea. And there were a great many in the west. Some that died hundreds of years ago. And there are some that will die tomorrow. Is it in the west that the men will die tomorrow? Come near, near to me. Is she right, do you think? Or is she a woman from beyond the world? She doesn't know well what she's talking about with the want and troubles she's gone through. The poor thing. We should treat her well. I'll give her a drink of milk and a bit of the olden cake. Maybe we should give her something along with that to bring her on her way. A few pence or a shilling itself, and we with so much money in the house. Indeed, I don't begrudge it to her if we had to spare. But soon we go running through what we have, and then we had to break the hundred pounds. And that would be a pity. Oh, shame on you, Peter. Give her a shilling and your blessing with it, or our own luck will go from us. Will you have a drink of milk, ma'am? It is not food nor drink that I want. Well, here is something for you. What I want, it is not silver that I want. What is it you be asking for? Well, if anyone would give me his help, he must give me himself. He must give me all. Have you no one to carry you in your age, ma'am? Well, I have not. With all the lovers that brought me their love, I never set out a bed for any. And are you lonely going the roads, ma'am? Well, I have my thoughts. And I have my hopes. What hopes have you to hold to? The hope of getting my beautiful fields back again. The hope of putting the strangers out of my house. What way will you do that, ma'am? I have good friends that will help me. They are gathering to help me now. I am not afraid. Well, if they are to put down today, they will get the upper hand tomorrow. Well, I must be going to meet my friends. They are coming to help me and I must be there to welcome them. I must call the neighbours together to welcome them. I will go with you. It is not to her friends you have to go and welcome, Michael. It is the girl that is coming into the house you have to welcome. You have plenty to do. There is food and drink to bring into the house. The woman that is coming home is not coming with empty hands, and you would not have an empty house before her. Maybe you don't know, ma'am. My son is going to be married tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's not a man going to his marriage that I look for for help. Who is she? Do you think at all? You did not tell us your name yet, ma'am. Well, some call me the poor old woman. And there are some that call me Kathleen. The daughter of Houlihan. Why, I think I knew someone of that name once. Who was it, I wonder? Oh, it must have been someone I knew when I was a boy. No, no, I remember. I heard it in a song. Uh, they are wondering that there were songs made for me. There have been many songs made for me. I heard one in the wind this morning. Do not make a great keening when the graves have been dug tomorrow. Do not call the white scarfed riders to the burn that shall be tomorrow. Do not spread food to call strangers. To the wakes that shall be tomorrow. Do not give money for prayers, for the dead shall die tomorrow. They will have no need for prayers. They will have no need for prayers. I do not know what that song means, but tell me something that I can do for you. Come over to me, Michael. Hush, father, listen to her. It is a hard service they take that help me. Many that are red-cheeked now will be pale-cheeked. 
many that have been free to walk the hills and the bogs and the rushes will be sent to walk hard streets in far countries. Many a good plan will be broken. Many that have gathered money will not stay to spend it. Many a child will be born, then there will be no father at its christening to give it a name. They that had the red cheeks will have the pale cheeks for my sake and for all that they will think that they are well paid. They shall be remembered forever. They shall be alive forever. They shall be speaking forever. The people shall hear them forever. Look at him, Peter. He's got the look of a man who's got the touch. Look here, Michael, at the wedding clothes. Such grand clothes as these are. You have a right to fit them on now. It would be a pity tomorrow if they did not fit. The boys would be laughing at you. Take them, Michael. Go in the room and fit them on. What wedding are you talking of? What clothes will I be wearing tomorrow? These are the clothes that you will wear when you marry Delia Cahill tomorrow. I had forgotten that. There are some coming to our own door. What is it that has happened? There are ships in the bay. The French have landed at Kalela. Michael! Michael, why do you look at me like a stranger? The boys are all hurrying down the hillside to join the French. Michael won't be going to join the French. Tell him not to go, Peter. Oh, it's no use. He doesn't hear a word we're saying. Try and coax him over to the fire. Michael, Michael, you won't, you won't leave me. You won't join the French and... We're going to be married. They shall be speaking forever. The people shall hear them forever. Did you see an old woman going down the path? I, I did not. But I saw a young girl. And she had the walk of a queen. He cries out against love. There are three fine devils even at my heart. They let me my grief with editing. Sickness rat and love rat. In an empty packet, my ruin and my woe. Poverty let me without a shirt. Barefooted. Bar legged, without any covering. Sickness left me with my head weak and my body miserable. <laughs> An ugly thing. Love let me like a cow upon the floor, like a half barn sad that is never put out. Worse than the cough, worse than the fever itself, worse than any curse at all under the sun, worse than the great poverty, is the devil that is called love by the people. And if I were in my young youth again, I would not take or give or ask for a kiss. The Traveling Man what is it you're going to make, Mother? I'm going to make a grand cake with white flour. Seeds I will put in it. Maybe I'll make a little cake for yourself, too. You can be baking it in the little pot, while the big one will be baking in the big pot. It is a pity Daddy to be away at the fair on a... Sowin night. Oh, I must make my feast all the same. For Sowin night is more to me than any other one. It was on this night seven years ago that I first came into this house. You'll be taking down those plates from the dresser, so. Those plates with flowers on them. 
And be putting them on the table? I will. I will set out the house today and bring down the best delf and put whatever thing is best on the table because of the great thing that happened to me seven years ago. What great thing was that? I was after being driven out of the house where I was a serving girl. Where was that house? Well, tell me about it. Oh, it was over there I was living, in a farmer's house up on Sleeve Etch, near to Sleeve Nanor, the Golden Mountain. The Golden Mountain? That must be a grand place. <laughs> Not very grand indeed, but bare and cold enough at that time of the year. Anyway, I was driven out to sow and day like this because of some things that were said against me. What did you do then? Well, what had I to do but to go walk in the bare bog road through the rough hills where there was no shelter to find and a sharp wind going through me and red mud heavy on my shoes. I came to Kilbacanty. Oh, oh, I know Kilbacanty. That is where a woman in a shop gave me sweets out of a battle. Oh, so she might now. But that night her door was shut and all the doors were shut. And I saw through the windows the boys and the girls sitting round the hearth and playing their games. And I had no courage to ask for shelter. In dread I was they might think some shameful thing of me and I go on the road alone in the night time. Did you come here after that? I went on down the hill in the darkness. And with the dint of my trouble and the length of the road, my strength failed me and I had like to fall. And so I did fall at the last, meeting with a heap of broken stones by the roadside. I hurt my knee one time when I fell on the stones. It was then the great thing happened. I saw a stranger coming towards me, a very tall man, the best I ever saw, bright and shining that you could see him through the darkness, and I knew him to be no common man. Who was he? Well, it is what I thought, that he was the king of the world. Oh, had he a crown like a king? Well, if he had, it was made of the twigs of a bare black thorn. But in his hand, he had a green branch that never grew on a tree of this world. He took me by the hand and he led me over the stepping stones outside to this door. And he bade me to go in and I would find good shelter. I was kneeling down to thank him, but he raised me up and he said, I will come to see you some other time. And do not shut up your heart in the things I give you, he said, but have a welcome before me. Did he go away then? Well, I saw him no more after that, but I did as he bade me. I came in like this, and your father was sitting there by the hearth, a lonely man that was after losing his wife. He was alone, and I was alone. And we married one another, and I never wanted since for shelter or for safety. And a good wife I made him. And a good housekeeper. Will the king come again to the house? Oh, I have his word for it that he will come. But he did not come yet. It is often your father and myself looked out of the door on a sowing night, thinking to see him. I hope he won't come in the night time and I asleep. Oh, it is of him I do be thinking every year. And I setting out the house and making a cake for the supper. What will he do when he comes in? Oh, he will sit over there in the chair and maybe he will taste a bit of the cake. I will call in all the neighbours and I will tell them that he is here. They will not be keeping it in their mind against me that I brought nothing come into the house. They will all know that I am before any of them, the time they know who it is has come to visit me. They will all kneel down and ask for his blessing, but the best blessing will be on the house that he came to of himself. And are you going to make the cake now? Oh, I must make it now indeed, or I will be late with it. Oh, I'm late as it is. I was expecting one of the neighbours to bring me white flour from the town. I'll wait no longer. I'll go borrow it in some place. There will be a wedding in the Stonecutter's house Thursday. It's likely there will be flour in the house. Let me go along with you. Oh, it is best for you to stop here. Be a good child now and don't be meddling with the things on the table. Sit down there by the hearth and break up those little sticks I am after bringing in. Make a little heap of them now before me and we will make a good fire to bake the cake. See now how many you will break. Don't go out the door while I'm away. I'd be in dread of you going near the river and it in flood. Behave yourself well now and be counting the sticks as you break them. <sighs> one. Oh, two. Oh, I can break this one into a great many. One, two, three, four. Oh, this one's wet. I don't like a wet one. Five, six. Oh, that's a great heap. Oh, oh, let me try that great big one. Oh, that's too hard. I don't think Mother could break that one. 
Daddy could break it. Give it here to me and hold this. That is a good branch. Apples on it and flowers. The tree at the mill has apples yet, but all the flowers are gone. Where did you get this branch? I got it in a garden a long way off. Where is the garden? Where do you come from? I have come from beyond those hills. Is it, is it from the golden mountain you are come? From Sleeve Nanor? That's where I come from, surely. From the golden mountain. I would like to sit down and rest for a while. Oh, sit down here beside me. We must not go near the table or touch anything or Mother will be angry. Mother is going to make a beautiful cake. A cake that will be fit for a king that might be coming into our supper. And I will sit here with you on the floor. Tell me now about the golden mountain. There is a garden in it. There is a tree in the garden that has fruit and flowers at one time. Oh, oh like, like this branch. Just like that little branch. What other things are in the garden? There are birds of all colors that sing it every hour. The way the people will come to hear their prayers. And there is a high wall about the garden. What way can the people get through the wall? There are four gates in the wall. A gate of gold, a gate of silver, and a gate of crystal, and a gate of white brass. I will make a garden. I will make a wall with these sticks. This big stick will make the first wall. <laughs> uh, and I will put this in the middle. This is the tree. Oh, I, I will get something to make it stand up. Oh, I can't reach it. Get up and give me that shining jug. Here it is for you. Tell me something else that is in the garden. There are four wells of water in it, which are as clear as glass. Oh, get me down those cups, uh, those flowery cups. We will put them for wells. Oh, now I will make the gates. Oh, give me those plates for gates. Not those ugly ones, the nice ones at the top. Ternel, it is finished. Is it as good as the other garden? How can we go to the Golden Mountain to see the other garden? We can ride to it. But we have no horse. Just form will be our horse. Now, off we go. Come ride and ride to the it can come ride and ride with a will For the flower comes with the fruit There beyond a hill and a hill Come ride and ride to the guard Then come ride like the martial winds There's barley there and water there And a stamen to How do you like that ride, little horseman? Come on again! I want another ride! The archangels stand in a row There and all the garden bless The archangel acts so victor The angel work at a cider press Ride and ride to the garden, come ride like the martial wind. There's barley there and water there and a stamen to your mind. We will soon be at the Golden Mountain now. Ride again, sing another song. Oh, scent of the broken out, pulls oh the shuffling of holes. Beyond a hill and a hill There in the land that no one knows Come ride and ride to the garden Come ride like a march wind There's barley there and water There and a statement to your mind This will be the last. It will be a good ride. Did a 
anyone ever see the like of that? A common beggar, travelling man off the roads, to be holding the child, to be leaving his ragged arms about him as if he was one of his own sort. Get out of that, whoever you are, and quit this house, or I'll call to some that will make you quit it. Oh, do not send him out. He's not a bad man. He's a good man. He was playing horses with me. He has grand songs. Oh, let him get away out of this now, himself and his share of songs. Look at the way he has your bib destroyed that I was after washing in the morning. He was holding me on the horse. We were riding. I might have fallen. He held me. I give you my word, you are done now with riding horses. Let him go on his road. I have no time to be cleaning the place after the like of him. Oh, he's tired. Let him stop here till evening. Let me rest here for a while. I've been travelling a long way. Where did you come from today? I came over Slivech from Slivnanor. I had no house to stop in. I walked the long bog road. The wind was going through me. There was no shelter to be got. The red mud of the road was heavy on my feet. I got no welcome in the villages. So I came here to this place, to the rising of the river in Balili. What is best for you to go on to the town? It is not far for you to go. And we will maybe be having company coming in here. Will you give me a bit of that door ring with me? I've gone a long time fasting. It is not often in the year I make bread like this. There are a few cold potatoes on the dresser. Are they not good enough for you? There is many a one would be glad to get them. Whatever you'll give me, I will take what it. What in the earthly world has happened all the delf? Where are all the jugs gone and the plates? They were all in it when I went out a while ago. We were making a garden with them. Well, we were making that garden, there in the corner. Is that what you were doing after I bidden you to sit still and to keep yourself quiet? Oh, just to tie you in the chair that I will another time. My grand jugs, my plates that I bought the first time I ever went marketing into Gort. Oh, the best in the shop they were. Look at that now, look at what you are after doing. I do not blame the child. It was I myself who took them down from the dresser. Oh, it was you took them. What business had you doing that? Oh, it's the last time a tramp or a tinker or a rogue of the roads will have a chance of laying his hand on anything in this house. It is jailed you should be. What did you want, touching the dresser at all? Is it looking you were for what you could bring away? I would not refuse these hands that were held out for them. If ever for the four winds of the world, he had asked, I'd have put their bridles into these innocent hands. Get out of this. Get out of this, I tell you. There is no shelter here for the like of you. Look at that mud on the floor. You are not fit to come into the house of any decent, respectable person. Indeed. I'm more used to the roads than to the shelter of houses. It is often I have spent a night on the bare hill. Ha! No wonder in that. Go out of this now, to whatever company you are best used to, whatever they are. The worst of people, it is likely they are. Thieves and drunkards and shameless women. Maybe so. Drunkards, thieves, shameless women. Stones that have fallen, that are trodden underfoot. Bodies that are spoiled with sores, bodies that are worn with fast and minds that are broken with much sin. And the poor, the mad, the bad. Get out with you. Go back to your friends, I say. I will go. I will go back to the high road that is walked by the bare feet of the poor, by the innocent, bare feet of children. I will go back to the rocks, to the wind to the cries of the trees in the storm. Oh, he's forgotten his branch. My good plates from the dresser and dirty red mud on the floor and the sticks all scattered around in every place. Where is the child gone? Oh, I don't see him. He couldn't have gone to the river. It is getting dark. The bank is slippy. Come back. Come back. Where are you? Oh, where were you? I was in dread it was to the river you were gone. Or into the river. I went after him. He has gone over the river. He couldn't do that. He couldn't go through the flood. He did go over it. It was as if he was walking on the water. There was a light before his feet. That could not be so. What put that thought into your mind? I called him to come back for the branch. And he turned where he was in the river. And he bade me bring it back and show it to yourself. Oh, there are fruit and flowers on it. It is a branch that is not of any earthly tree. He is gone. He is gone and I never knew him. 
He was that stranger that gave me all. He is the king of the world. A poem written in time of trouble by an Irish priest who had taken orders in France. My thoughts, my grief, are withhold strength. My spirit is journeying towards death. My eyes are as a frozen sea. My terrors, my daily food. There is nothing in life but only misery. My poor heart is torn and my tats are sharp wounds within me, mourning the miserable state of Ireland. Misfortune has come upon us all together. The poor, the rich, the weak, the strong. The great lord by whom hundreds were maintained. The powerful strong man. The man that holds the plough. And the cross laid on the bower shoulder of every man. Our fists are without any voice of priests, and none at them but women lamenting, tearing their hair with troubled minds, caning miserably after the Fenians. The pipes of our organs are broken, our harps have lost their strings that were tuned that may have made the great lamentations of Ireland. Until the strong men come back across the say there is no help for us but bitter crying, screams, baiting of hands and calling out. I do not know of anything under the sky that is friendly or favourable to the quail, but only the sea that our need brings us to, or the wind that blows to the harbour, the ship that is bearing us away from Ireland. And there is reason that they are reconciled with us, for we increase the sea with our tears and the wandering wind with our sighs. Oh, come tell me, Sean O'Farrell, tell me why you hurry so. Archibuckle hush and listen, and his cheeks were all aglow. I have their orders from the captain, get you ready quick and soon. For the pikes must be together by the rising of the moon. By the rising of the moon, by the rising of the moon. For the pikes must be together by the rising of the moon. Quite well known to you and me. One more word for signal token, whistle out the marching tune. With the pike upon your shoulder by the rising of the moon. By the rising of the moon, by the rising of the moon. With the pike upon your shoulder by the rising of the moon. Out from many a mud wall cabin eyes were watching through the night. Many a manly heart was beaten for the blessed morning's light. Murmurs rang along the valleys to the banshee's lonely croon. And a thousand pikes were flashing by the rising of the moon. By the rising of the moon, by the rising of the moon. And a thousand pikes were flashing by the rising of the moon. All along that singing river that black mass of men was seen. High above their shining weapons flew their own beloved green. Death to every foe and traitor, whistle out the marching tune. And her army boys, hey! hey! tis the rising of the moon. By the, the rising moon. of the moon, by the rising of the moon. For the pikes must be together by the, the rising of the moon. The rising of the moon. <laughs> This would be a good place to put up a notice. Better ask him. Will this be a good place to put up a placard? Will we put a notice up here on the barrel? There's a flight of steps here that leads to the water. This is a place that should be minded well. If he got down here, his friends might have a boat to meet him. They might send it in here from the outside. Would the barrel be a good place to put a notice up? Oh, it, it might. You can put it there. Dark hair, dark eyes, smooth face, height five feet five. Well, there's not much to take a hold of in that. It's a pity I had no chance of seeing him before he broke out of jail. They say he's a wonder, that it's he that makes all the plans for the whole organization. There isn't another man in Ireland would have broken jail the way he did. He must have some friends among the jailers. A hundred pounds is little enough for the government to offer for him. You may be sure that any man in the forest that takes him will get a promotion. I'll mind this place myself. I wouldn't wonder at all if he came this way. 
He might come slipping along there. All his friends might be waiting for him there. And once he's got away, it's little chance we'd have of finding him again. It's maybe under a load of kelp he'd be in a fishing boat, and not one to help a married man that wants it to the reward. And if we get him itself, nothing but abuse on our head for it from the people, and maybe from our own relations. Well, we have to do our duty in the farce. Haven't we the whole country dependent on us to keep law in order? It's those that are down would be up, and those that are up would be down if it wasn't for us. Well, hurry on. You have plenty of other places to placard yet. And come back here then to me. You can take the lantern. Don't be gone too long now. It's very lonesome here, with nothing but the moon. It's a pity we can't stab along with you. The government should have sent more police into the town, with him in jail and at a size time too. Well, good luck to your watch. A hundred pounds and promotion, sure. Oh, there must be a great deal of spending in a hundred pounds. It's a pity some honest man not to be the better of that. Where are you going? <coughs> Ma'am, uh, uh, I'm a poor ballad singer, your honor. Well, I thought to sell some of these to the sailors. Now stop! Didn't I tell you to stop? You can't go on there. Ah, oh, well. Very well. Uh, well, it's a hard thing to be poor. Well, all the world's against the poor. Who are you? <laughs> well, you'd be as wise as myself if I told you. But I don't mind I'm one Jimmy Walsh. A ballad singer. Jimmy Walsh. I don't know that name. Oh, well, sure. They know it well enough in Ennis Sergeant. Well, were you ever an Ennis Sergeant? Uh, what, what brought you here? Well, sure, it's to the assizes I came. Thinking I might make a shilling here or there. Well, it's in the one train with the judges I came. Well, if you came so far, you may as well go farther, for you'll walk out of this. Well, I will, I will. I will. I'll just go on to where I was going then. Come back from those steps. No one has leave to pass down them tonight. Well, I'll just sit on top of these here steps till I see. Well, won't some sailor buy a ballad off me that would give me my supper? Oh, well, they do be late going back to the ship. Uh, well, it's often I saw them in car carry down the key in a handcart. <laughs> Move on, I tell you. I won't have anyone lingering about the key tonight. Uh, well, I'll go. Oh. It's the poor that have the hard life. Well, maybe yourself might like one, Sergeant. Well, here's a good sheet now. Uh, oh, content in a pipe. Ah. Oh. Contented, I said, with my pint and my pipe. Uh, well, that's not very much. Uh, um, a peeler and the goat. Uh, uh, and she peeler went one night on duty and patrol in the Oh, oh. Uh, well, uh, I suppose you wouldn't like that. Uh, well, uh, Johnny Hart. Oh, that's a lovely song. Move on. Well, why don't you wait until you hear it all? Uh, there was a rich farmer's daughter that lived near the town of Ross. She carted a Highland soldier. His name was Johnny Hart, says the mother to her daughter. I go distracted mad if you marry that Highland soldier. I'll dress. Where are you going? Well, well, sure, Sergeant. You told me to be going. I'm going. Don't be a fool. I didn't tell you to go that way. I told you to go back to the town. Uh, well, back to the town, is it? Here, I'll show you the way. Be off with you. Oh. What are you stopping for? Oh, I think I know what you're waiting for, Sergeant. And what's that to you? Oh, and I know well the man you're waiting for. Oh, I know him well. <laughs> well, well, I'll be going. Well, you know him. Come, come back here. What sort is he? Well, come back. Is it, Sergeant? Do you want to have me killed? Why do you say that? Well, never you mind. Oh, well, I'll be going. 
Oh, I wouldn't be in your shoes if the reward was ten times as much. Oh. Not if it was ten times as much. Oh. Come back here. Come back. What sort is he? Where did you see him? Well, well, I suppose. <sighs> well, I saw him in my own place, I did. In County Clare. I tell you, Sergeant, you wouldn't like to be looking at him. Oh, you'd be afraid to be in the one place with him. Oh, and there isn't a weapon he doesn't know the use of. Oh, and as for strength, well, his muscles are as strong as as that board. Oh, is he as bad as that? Oh, so he is. Do you tell me so? There was a poor man in our place. A sergeant from Ballyvon. He was with a lump of stone, he did it. Oh, I never heard that. Ah, and you wouldn't, Sergeant. It's not everything that happens that gets into the papers. Oh, and there was this one policeman in plain clothes, too. Hmm. It was in Limerick, he was. It was after that time of the attack on the police barrack at Kilmalock. Oh, moonlight. Just like this. Mm, water side. Nothing was known for certain. Oh. You say so. It's a terrible county to belong to. Pff, that's so indeed. Well, you might be standing over there looking out that way. Thinking you saw him coming up this side of the quay. But really, he's coming up the other side. And then he be on you before you even knew where you were. Oh, it's a whole troop of police they ought to put out here to stop a man like that. Oh, well, if you like me to stop with you, I could be looking down this side. I could, uh, I could be sitting up here on this barrel. And you know him well, too. Oh, I'd know him a mile off, Sergeant. But you wouldn't want to share the reward. Well, is it a poor man like me? Let's go in the roads and sing in the fairs to have a name on him that he took a reward. But you don't want me. I'll be safer in town, you said. to oh, go to town. Well, you, you can stop. All right, Sergeant. Ah, uh, well, I wonder now. Aren't you tired walking up and down the way that you are? If I'm tired, I'm used to it. Well, you might have your hard work before you tonight yet. Well, take it easy while you can, and there's plenty of room up here on the barrel. You'll see farther out when you're higher up. Oh, maybe so. You made me feel a bit queer with the way you talked. Yeah, well, give me a match, Sergeant. <coughs> <coughs> and take a draw for yourself. A little quiet here. <laughs> well, now wait until I give you the light, but no, you needn't turn around no Come on, now don't take your eye off the key for the life of you. Never fear, I won't. <sighs> <clears throat> Indeed, it is a hard thing to be in the farce. Out at night and no thanks for it. For all the danger we're in. And it's little we get but abuse from the people. And no choice but to obey our orders. And never ask when a man is sent into danger if you are a married man with a family. <clears throat> As true the hills I walk to view the hills and shamrock plain. Well, I stood a while where nature smiles to view the rocks and streams. On the matron fair I fixed my eye beneath the fertile vale. As she sang her song, it was the wrong of poor old Grand Uwale. Stop that. That's no song to be singing in these times. <laughs> oh, Sergeant, I was only singing to keep me heart up. Well, it sinks when I think of him. Oh. To think the two of us sitting here and him creeping up the key. Oh, maybe to get to us? Are you keeping a good lookout? Oh, I am too. And for no reward. And I the foolish man. Well, 
when I saw a man in trouble. Oh, I could never help but try to get him out of it. Well, what's that? Well, did something hit me? You'll get your reward in heaven. <laughs> well, Sergeant, I know that. I know that. Well, life is precious. Ah, well, you can sing if it gives you more courage. Well, her head was bare, her hands and feet with iron bands were bound. Her pensive strain and plaintive wail mingles the evening gale. And the song she sang with mournful air, I am old grand you ale. Her lips so sweet that monarchs kiss. Oh no, no that's not it. Her gown she wore was stained with gar. <laughs> <coughs> that's it, you missed that. <laughs> well, so you're right, Sergeant. So it is. So I missed it. Oh, her gown she wore was stained with gore, of course. Oh, well, to think of a man like you knowing a song like that. Oh, there's many a thing a man might know and might not have any wish for. Now, I dare say, Sergeant, in your youth, you used to be sitting up on a wall the way you're sitting up here on this barrel. With the other lads beside you and you singing Granny Whale. I did then. And the Shan Van Vocht, I bet. Oh, <laughs> I did then. <laughs> and the green on the cake. Ah, ha, that was one of them. <laughs> and maybe the man you're watching for tonight used to be sitting up here on the wall when he was young, singing those same songs. Well, it's a queer world. Oh, well, shh, shh. I think I see something coming. Oh, no, it's only a dog. And isn't it a queer world? Well, maybe it's one of the boys you used to be singing with. The time that you'll be arresting today or tomorrow and sending into the docks. Well, that's true indeed. And maybe one night after you'd been singing if the boys had told you some plan. Some plan to free the country. Maybe you might have joined them. Maybe it is you that would be in trouble now. Oh. Well, who knows but I might. I had a great spirit in those days. Well, it's a queer world, Sergeant. And it's little any mother knows when she sees her child creeping on the floor what might happen to it before it has gone through its life. Or who will be who in the end. That's a queer thought now. And a true thought. Uh, wait now till I think it out. It wasn't for the sense I have, and for my wife and family, and for me joining the force at the time I did, it might be myself now would be after breaking jail and hiding in the dark. And it might be himself that's hiding in the dark and got out of jail would be sitting up where I am on this barrel. And it might be myself would be creeping up, trying to make my escape from himself. And it might be himself would be keeping the law, and myself would be breaking it. And myself would be trying maybe to put a bullet in his head or to take a lump of stone the way you said he did. Oh, no, that that myself did. Oh, uh. what's that? <sighs> well, it's uh, it's nothing, Sergeant. Thought it might be a boat. I had a notion there might be friends of his coming about the keys with a boat. Uh, Sergeant, I'm thinking it was with the people you were, not with the law you were when you were a young man. Well, if I was foolish then, that time's gone. Well, uh, maybe, Sergeant. I bet it comes into your head sometimes in spite of your belt and your tunic. Maybe it was might as well have been that you have followed the Grand New Whale. It's no business of yours what I think. Well, maybe, Sergeant. You'll be on the side of the country yet. Don't talk to me like that. I have my duties and I know them. That was a boat. I hear the oars. <laughs> Oh, then, tell me, Sean of Farrell, where the gathering is to be. In the old spot by the river, Stop right that. we're alone to you Stop and me. That, I tell you. One more word for signal oh. token, whistle up the marching tune. Oh. With your pike upon your shoulder if at you the rising of that, the moon. you don't stop that, I'll arrest you. <laughs> That's 
signal. You must not pass this way. Step farther back. Who are you? You are no ballad singer. <laughs> Well, you needn't ask who I am. That blackbird will tell you. You're the man I'm looking for. Well, that I am. There's a hundred pounds on me head, and there's the friend of mine below to take me in the boat. He knows the safe place to take me to. Oh, oh it's a pity. It's a pity. Oh, you deceived me. You deceived me well. Well, sure, I'm a friend of the grand new whale. Oh, well, there's a hundred pounds on me yet. Oh, it's a pity. It's a pity. <laughs> well, will you let me pass? Or must I make you let me? I am in the farce. I will not let you pass. Eh, well, I thought to do it with my tongue. Well, what's that? Here, this is where we left him. It's my comrades coming. Oh, uh, well, you won't betray me, the friend of the Grand Whale. Ooh, that was the last of the placards. If Mrs. escape, it won't be unknown he'll make it. Did anyone come this way? No one. No one at all. <laughs> no one at all. We had no orders to go back to the station. We can stop along with you. No, I don't want you. There's nothing for you to do here. You bade us to come back here and to keep watch with you. I'd sooner be alone. Would any man come this way and you making all that talk? It's better the place be quiet. Well, we'll leave you the lantern anyhow. Oh, I don't want it. Bring it with you. You might want it. There are clouds coming up and you've got the darkness and night before you yet. I'll leave it over here on the barrel. Bring it with you, I tell you. No more talk. Well, I thought it might be a comfort to you. I often think when I have it in my hand and can be... Flashing it about into every dark corner that it's the same as being beside the fire at home and the bits of bog would blazing up now and again. Be off with the two of you! Yourselves and your lantern! What are you waiting for? <laughs> well, for me hat and me wig, of course. <laughs> well, you wouldn't wish me the death of cold, would you? Ah, uh, well, good night, comrade. And thank you. Well, you did me a good turn tonight. I'm obliged to you. Well, maybe I'll be able to do as much for you when the small rise up and the big fall down and, and when we all change places. At the rising of the moon. <laughs> hundred pounds reward. A hundred pounds! Oh, I wonder now, am I as great a fool as I think I am? So fill to me the parting glass Good night and joy be 